I come a long way to deliver a short message. The 21st century is Australia's for the taking. Imagine being so powerful that you would have to give someone your approval before they could become the next president or prime minister. Imagine having so much authority that organizations and even governments fear you. And having the power to sway the beliefs of millions of people on issues that will shape the country and in fact the world, such as the elections. And thank you to my very good friend, Rupert Murdoch. There's only one Rupert that we know. In vision of Iraq, climate change. We should approach climate change with great skepticism. Wars and COVID using a propaganda vehicle and driven by the biggest media empire the world has ever seen. In spite of espionage accusations, the distribution of fake information and the hacking for your members' phones, Rupert Murdoch still holds all that power and he's still that same media psycho he has always been. For many years, Murdoch and his executives were part of the political world serving a very particular agenda. He intervened on policy concerns, took sides in disputes with the governments and the access to the cabinets. He was deeply involved in governmental operations and had strong relationships with people of influence. He was able to achieve this because he held a significant control over a number of publications that had an impact on public opinion and the public discourse on politics at the federal level. And anyone who dared to cross him would be subject to his wrath of unfairly hostile coverage. Some may even call it bullying. This video is about one of the world's richest and most powerful men, or as Biden said, the most dangerous man in the world, and the media empire on which his power rests. This is Rupert Murdoch, the man who owns the news. If we consider its power, we can see how much the media can affect public opinion. The media is a powerful weapon that threatens how we develop as people, how our knowledge is expanded, and how we get information of all kinds. It can affect how we feel about our own identities in many ways. It can make us feel like we belong to a group and injects the sentiment of pride. But on the other hand, it can also make us feel isolated, worthless, or in danger. The media can and do have a significant political impact on how we view particular social groupings, such as pressure organizations and minority groups. The influence of mass media on our perceptions is what constitutes appropriate and inappropriate behavior. In other words, he who rules the media rules the minds. After Sir Keith Murdoch died from cancer in 1952, his son Rupert returned from Oxford to Melbourne, Australia at the age of 22 to take on his father's legacy. Rupert was lucky enough to inherit a chain of Australian newspapers. He accepted a tremendous burden, but he persisted in trying. He was able to grow the family business with resilience and risky but smart business decisions. With a net worth of $22.4 billion, he is currently not only among the richest people in the world, but also the most powerful man in the world. Murdoch has built a portfolio of newspapers worth more than $50 billion through a series of acquisitions. He is now the chairman of Fox Corporation and the executive chairman of New News Corp and Fox Corp are two of the most known media companies worldwide. More specifically, these two companies run media outlets including the Wall Street Journal, Fox News, Collins, and New York Post across five continents, providing him with influence like no other. On the 8th of December 2017, Sabrina Bazelon, a project manager at Southampton Row, sent a memo for the CMA's consideration in which she points out the evil strategy that Murdoch and his empire made to influence the popular opinion in the 2016 US presidential election. The letter demonstrates not only how beneficial Fox News is to Mr. Trump, but also how Mr. Murdoch was able to influence Mr. Trump through his particular position and access. Mr. Trump enjoys watching Fox News and frequently tweets or mentions talking points he has learned from Fox News programming. Additionally, it is said that Mr. Murdoch and Mr. Trump speak at least once per week, if not more frequently, and Mr. Murdoch is asked for his opinion on important hiring decisions such as those involving the Chairman of the Federal Reserve and the Chairman of the Federal Communication Commission. As it became clear that Trump would win the election, Murdoch's opinion of him and his US news organization seemed to change. As soon as Trump was selected as the nominee, the two men practically agreed to an agreement of mutual benefits. Murdoch's media companies would aid in Trump election, and once in office, Trump would exercise his executive authority in ways that benefited Murdoch. Trump's vocal criticism of the HNT 
Time Warner measure, which came after the 21st Century Fox attempted but failed to acquire Time Warner in 2014, served as an early hint of this mutual secret agreement. Trump's bond with Murdoch grew stronger after he won the election for president. The evening lineup of Fox News presenters was changed to give pro-Trump voices more prominence, while Megyn Kelly, one of the network's top presenters who had infamously feuded with Trump throughout the campaign, left the network. Finally tonight, a personal and professional note from me to you. After more than a dozen years at Fox News, I have decided to pursue a new challenge. Since then, the pattern has only persisted. A Trump's confidant, who was among the first commentators to back Mr. Trump in the presidential campaign, according to the New York Times, Laura Ingraham recently took over hosting duties for Fox News' 10 p.m. time slot, one of the most sought after on cable television. Currently, she communicates with the president a couple times per month. She said casually, sometimes I call him and occasionally I get a call. Meanwhile, other Murdoch news outlets have emulated Fox News and made internal editorial adjustments resulting in a more pro-war line. When George Bush put out his invasion of Iraq, Rupert Murdoch went all out supporting the idea. This that invasion was illegal and provoked unnecessary. Of the 175 Murdoch papers worldwide, all but one, the Hobart Mercury supported the war. But the Mercury was soon forced back into line. Three months after the invasion, Greg Sheridan said about Murdoch, the eagle is soaring, the bold eagle of American power is aloft. High above the humble earth and everything it sees is splendid, for as it soars and sweeps, it sees victory, power and opportunity. The Murdoch media empire has played a huge role in helping neoconservative bureaucrats in gaining control of American politics, public opinion. Oh, I believe Bush is right, certainly. Well, we can't back down now, where you hand over the whole of the Middle East to Saddam. And I think Bush is acting very morally, very correctly, and I think he is going to go on with it. As US tanks and infantry units rapidly moved towards Baghdad on what's called Operation Iraq Freedom, which was initially called Operation Iraq Liberation, but changed the name because in that case the initials will be oil. The world once again witnessed the might of the Western military establishments and the dramatic TV spectacle of a 21st century blitzkrieg. Journalists selectively embedded within the US combat units reported on the daring and courage of coalition soldiers, sacrificing emotional objectivity for the immediacy of battle. The dramatic and personalized news reports from the ever-shifting front were complemented by the anticipated footage of precision and smart bombing with one single target in mind, people's opinion. For the majority of the news media held by Rupert and financially supported by the US, the Iraq war was nothing more than liberation, the evil doer and his weapons of mass destruction being neutralized, and the war for peace would be won. Rupert Murdoch has expressed his complete support for the war, hailing George Bush for behaving morally and right, and complimenting Tony Blair, the British Prime Minister, for having guts to go against the grain in favor of an attack on Iraq. The media mogul, who has become good friends with the Prime Minister, declared that he supported Mr. Bush and Mr. Blair wholeheartedly despite the fact that they are currently facing strong opposition over going to war from Germany and France. He believed cheap oil would be the best thing to come out of this war, benefiting the global economy more than any tax cut could possibly do. The greatest thing to come out of this would be $20 a barrel of oil, that's bigger than any tax cut in any country and the CEO of the news corporation media conglomerate has criticized the US anti-war campaign, claiming that a large portion of the international community just cannot accept that the United States has the lone superpower. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to make another video about Rupert Murdoch and the roots of fake news. This is Coca from Shortery and I will be coming with more videos, so please make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching.